All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from lovely San Diego as usual. And today I'm joined by Jacqueline Troop Robinson. How are you doing, Jacqueline? Very well, thank you. And where are you today? I'm on the east coast of Canada. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. And Jacqueline is the C is, <clears throat> excuse me, is the CEO of Spark Engagement and focuses on strengthening leadership and engagement at all levels of the organization and works uh, with workshops and facilitation and coaching sessions uh, with companies and individuals. Today we're going to talk about passion at work and particularly like uh, there's a lot of organizations who are trying to adjust and figure out how they bring that same kind of work passion collaboration cohesiveness together when all their people are are remote. So um so Jackie this has been um this has obviously been a, a a big challenge and a lot of people are asking you for help and how to overcome this. Yes, I mean everyone's asking about that right now. People are concerned about individual employees' well-being. That's sort of top of mind. Mm -hmm. But for those who are able to work remotely, uh, to be productive, obviously it's how to make that experience the best it can be for them. Yeah. So what are some of the things that uh, you would advise uh, organizations to do in order, number one, to make people feel comfortable and then to make them feel, and then to get them productive? It's really interesting because we had certain advice that we would have given under normal circumstances. Mm -hmm. And it's been fascinating to work with clients to see under these very unusual circumstances, what works best and maybe what doesn't. And we found that actually it's not that different, but the degree to which you need to do certain things is. So for example, communications, we've all mm. know that that's really important. <laughs> that will always be important. But the CEOs that I'm working with that have had the best results so far in the last few weeks are those that maybe some would think of as over communicating, mm -hmm. but they're actually communicating through video technology twice a week, three times a week, like People mm -hmm. might be really shocked by that, but those that are really excelling, those whose engagement scores are going up during this time, that's one of the things they're doing. And I think that's a, a really important point there because I don't think you can over communicate when you have a virtual organization. And it's something that, that we learned ourselves as we built a virtual organization over a largely virtual organization over the last six or seven years is that is that you you have to communicate more, but it also becomes almost self-perpetuating that people get into a habit of communicating more. And it really does serve you. And therefore I, I think the idea of over communication is is a misnomer. I think it's lots of communication is a very, very good thing. I agree with you completely. I, I think people have reflected back to me that it feels like it's too much, but when I ask their employees, mm -hmm. yeah. it's not. So I think it's more people not worrying about it as a leader, I mean. Right? Yeah, don't yeah. worry about too much communication. If people derive value from it, that's really what you should be assessing. Yeah, and, and it, uh, that's a good point. I mean, obviously not communicating for the sake of if you're saying hello how's it going how's everything if you're saying that five times or ten times a day that's not very valuable <laughs> no. but if you're communicating if you're communicating stuff of value i think people appreciate it because if you start to scale back and to communicate less particularly at a time like this when people are surrounded by uncertain uncertainty you're only going to um, exacerbate that absolutely and it's interesting those ceo clients who are communicating weekly at least their employees are telling me, I feel that it's genuine. I feel it's transparent. I feel that they're telling me what I need to know as soon as they know. So there, it mm -hmm. really increased trust to yeah. a level in some companies I actually have not seen yet. I work with one CEO who has really struggled to build the trust of his team. And through this process, he's done that. And it's been a huge win for him. He didn't do it for that reason. And that's just the outcome of this very genuine, in the moment, transparent communication. Yeah, and I think there's a humanizing element of it. And I think this is where people's overlook because they think 
oh, if you're now virtual, um, then you're taking away the you know, the physical because you're not in the same building, you're not a face to face. However, I think because you have to communicate more and you have to communicate you know very directly and stuff, I think it's quite humanizing. I think, I mean, personally, I would tell you, I've built up really good relationships with people over the years who have worked remotely with who I rarely if ever see. Yes, yes. Well, our organization is quite similar. I have affiliates around the world, mm-hmm. and I obviously. Yeah. Uh, don't see them that often. So we've had to rely on video technology, mostly telephone, but more so the video technology. And it's worked very well. I have good relationships with these people. And so you can maintain those relationships, even if you're not physically in the same Mm -hmm. office for the for coming months, or in some cases, maybe some organizations won't go back. But at any rate, you can certainly maintain relationships. And I think the other thing that's really been interesting is one of the things that we work with is um, engagement through sort of agile teams. And I have one Mm -hmm. client who's been really resisting the whole idea of a team huddle. And now that they are online, they're doing team huddles all the time and people are loving it now, not long ones. We're talking 15 minute meetings, but people are loving it and they feel more connected in some ways than they did when they were sitting beside their team because they're in touch every day for short periods of time. They know what's top of mind. They're brainstorming solutions to things, you know, however that team huddle gets used. And I made a joke to the CEO and I said, well, maybe now the executive team will use them even if you do return to the office, right? But it's, a, but it's an excellent point because if you think about it, right, uh, when you're in the office, when you're in an office, right, you may book a meeting for the team and, and it's always an hour, right? Because it always yes. has to be an hour. Yes. And, then it, and then it's dependent on the meeting room being available and everybody being, and suddenly, and then you get there and the first 15 minutes are people just chatting to each other and then, and then the meeting can drag off. But, but when you do these things virtually, number one, you could get people together quickly, but also it's not the environment to just hang out or whatever, you know, the way that you could, you could in a physical room or whatever. It's, it's really an, a, an atmosphere of getting stuff done and moving and it has its own energy to it. And I think that's fun because I think sometimes there's more energy in those online huddles than there ever is in the, in the ones in an office. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And engagement is so much around that energy piece. Mm-hmm. That's, that is really important. And the one-on-one piece still has its place. Um, one employee was telling me, it took yeah. their manager eight days post working remotely to have a one-on-one, how are you wow. doing? Eight days. Mm. Now that might not seem like a long time, but when you have a drastic yeah. change of situation where you've always been in an office, you're now at home, it's kind of scary. Eight days was an eternity for this employee. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So and there's I think, also yeah, the, that piece. Yeah. And I think that piece as well. And again, I think that's, that people sometimes need to realize that 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 catch up that could be five minutes, and the oh, yes. and the employee and the it could be two minutes, and the employee will feel your your colleague will feel great about it. It doesn't have to be. You don't have to set out a long period. Of, all of that kind of stuff. It's just, and I think that's I think that's part of it is that people have to adapt, as you said, agile, but to to more concise, regular communication. Absolutely, and concise, short, mm-hmm. consistent. Uh, The other thing that's really come up from an engagement point of view around this remote working is the idea of flexibility. So I know that that's always been part of the benefits of working remotely. You can be more flexible when you work, when you're in your office, when you're not. But I think for those organizations that have always had an in-office space, in some, there was an expectation it's still a nine to five job or you're mm-hmm. still going to be available for these hours. And it's taken some organizations a minute to think, well, maybe because I'm working in the same home with my spouse, yeah. I should match her time at work. You know, she might be a shift worker in a hospital and she's working midnight to eight. Well, I can't be if I'm working out of my bedroom. I can't be on Zoom calls while she's sleeping. And Mm -hmm. some organizations have struggled with that a little bit, but those who have finally got it and have kind of gone, yeah, let's give people flexibility as long as they know what they need to do by when, let them set their own hours. For some of my clients, that was a huge shift. 
Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I think it's that, that whole thing of setting expectations and negotiation. And as you said, like being open and honest about your circumstances, because maybe you're at home right now. And yeah, maybe you have young children and they're running wild in the first couple of hours of the morning and you have to work around that. I think the flexibility to sit down and, and talk to your your manager or whatever and just say, listen, here's the, here's the reality on the ground here. Let's figure out how I can organize my work uh, around this so that I can be the most productive and you can get what you're looking for. And I think most people are open to that. And then I think that's an eye opener for the future about, you know, maybe I'm, I'm a big proponent of this now. I'm, I'm a reform smoker in, in when it comes to remote working. That's what I always describe myself as. Uh, you know, you know how, how terrible reform smokers are about telling I us. Do. So I used, to, I used to, if I could turn the clock back 10 years, I used to hate people working from home. I couldn't stand it. And when I ran organizations, I was always going to be here. And then uh, over the years, like I've become a big proponent of it. So I do think if you sit down and discuss with your manager your circumstances, then you may find out, you may turn out for the long run that these more flexible working arrangements work better for everyone. I, I actually have a CEO who is very anti-work from home. And in fact, as a result of this, he now is saying, I think for some of our employees, they'll be more productive working from home and happier you know, so Happy. better able to engage, better able to give their all than mm -hmm. in prior times. So I think it's opened important doors for some employee groups. Yeah, I, I think so. For some, and obviously not all uh, jobs lend itself to the, yeah. to this, but but I think if you look back, I mean, I look back since, I mean, I came to America 22 plus years ago from Ireland, right? And since the time I've been here, I've been, I, I originally was in Silicon Valley. So I went through the dot-com uh, explosion and implosion. And then obviously we had the financial crisis and now we have this. I think every time one of these comes along, people question more and more why they should locate themselves in expensive, high cost areas just to be within commutable distance of a physical building when they may get laid off next time there's a crisis. So I think now is the time if you want to be proactive as a company and you can facilitate people working remotely, you should really look for talent to work where they feel most comfortable, locate themselves in, in good areas with good cost of living or whatever, whatever makes them happy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, it's, it's interesting because every person is unique when it comes to engagement. That's something mm -hmm. that our research has shown us. So we have these universal drivers. We have these common denominators that we can certainly manage and share. But at the end of the day, you know, looking at unique solutions for your company, for the individuals that you want to attract or retain is definitely a way to go. And in its, in it, might be quite a different reality as we reopen for business. We don't know. And even you know, I had a meeting with my sales team who were nervous about selling during this time. Right, right. And rather than saying, well, what if we were to engage our clients in really meaningful conversations around what are their needs right now and how could we serve them and uplift them during this time? Mm -hmm. And really looking at engagement engagement from a meaning and progress point of view. What's, what would be meaningful right now? Forget your old spiels. Like yeah. what, what would create a meaningful conversation that we can really engage people in and then see where it goes and, and get creative about that. And I think that mindset is so important right now because there are so many unknowns. We cannot be afraid to reach out and engage employees, clients, whomever, whatever the group. It's really yeah. important right now. No, I think it's critically important. And, and funny, you should say from a sales point of view, in many ways, you probably stand a greater chance right now of actually connecting and somebody picking up the phone or answering you because a lot of people are remote now. They are sitting at home. They are actually finding that they have more time because they're not commuting. And in many ways, they're, they're, they're way more open to conversations. Uh, I was speaking to a colleague and he had read some research which said executives are 40% more available now than they were before. There I don't know go. where he read that. It's a stat that struck me, however, because I yeah, think yeah. it's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would say uh, with absolutely nothing to back it up apart from anecdotal <laughs> evidence, I would say I would agree. That, but it stands to reason. And it's also, I mean, I look at my own behavior. I'm more likely to take a call right now um, just, uh, you know, than normal. But, and, I, and I work remote 
um, for for a long, long time. But uh, but yeah, and I think people are also a little bit more, I would say, sensitive, responsive, and kind of you know, sort of yeah. I get it. It's hard out there, so maybe I should actually have a conversation with this guy who I may have dismissed before. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I think right now the piece around engagement that is really interesting is that it really speaks to an emotion, right? Engagement mm-hmm. isn't an intellectual activity. We can uh, measure opinions, but that's not going to give us a view no. on someone's engagement necessarily. It's much more about their emotional state of being. And so we know that that's driven by a sense of high meaning and a sense of progress. And so if we can activate those drivers of meaning and progress, you know, a sense of that we're on track, we're getting somewhere, we're making a difference in any of our conversations, because communication when you're working remotely becomes so important. Mm, That is going to go a long way of engaging anyone, be it a remote worker or a remote client who you're used to visiting, right? (laughs) It's all the same. And I think it's a it's a great point there, Jacqueline. Is the fact is if, as we talked about earlier, is if you if you communicate with with your teams and and your employees and that and your colleagues, and you co-op them into the process of let's figure out together how to create the most effective way of working, the most effective virtual organization we can right now. You're going to get a greater level of engagement because everybody Absolutely. feels like they have a part to play in that. Absolutely. In fact, just this week, I was speaking to a client who's do, we do annual engagement surveys, Mm -hmm. we do pulse surveys, those kind of things. And we were uh, due to do her annual survey. And she said, "Mm, we can't do it this year. The, you know, the pandemic, we've cut back 20% of our blah, blah, blah. And I said, oh, I get, I get the situation. Let's talk about it. And We talked about the importance of an engagement survey right now, given all of these challenges, but also understood the sensitivities and the optics and the challenges they were facing as a business. So we just talked it out. And the solution we came up with is we're going to run it in two phases. The first phase is going to be more of a research phase. And that's going to be one. I'm going to bear the costs of that because I'm going to do some research in partnership with them. Come September, we're going to do part two, and that will be their contribution. And so we figured out a win-win where I get to do some research, they get to get a pulse check on where people are at right now, and we'll continue with more of the norm in two or three months. And we just figured that out together. Yeah, and I think that's a fantastic, that's a, there's a fantastic and a creative solution. And I think the message that that also sends is the fact that we're not just, we're not battening down the hatches, we're not putting everything on hold, we're continuing to move forward. Yes, we may have to modify things a bit, but we're, that, for me, that, that uh, communicates optimism and, and confidence. Absolutely. And I think people are just generally scared right now yeah, yeah. and fearful and, and afraid of making a mistake. Um, and I think we just have to partner and just really believe that moving forward together is the right way and believe in our creativity. And we will find the right solution for each person, each organization, if we really just stay open and not have an agenda just do an exploration, wanting the best, you know, to create those win-win situations. Um, we've been, we're doing in some ways more interesting work and more mm-hmm. creative work than we've done in a number of years. Yeah. And I think that's a great, and I think that's a great takeaway as, as we finish up is, is that look at this as an opportunity that it's a challenge for you to be more creative and and great things can come out of it. So instead of just going, I'm just going to put my head down and hope this passes very soon is like just meet it head on and say, okay, let's see how we can do more creative things. And who knows, we might actually come out with something better that we never would have dreamed of otherwise. Absolutely. I think there's going to be so much opportunity in this and not as a cliche, I've actually been living it. I have Mm -hmm. come up with some new arrangements, some new partnerships, some new clients that I never thought during this time I would, I would connect with. And it's been fantastic. 
Yeah, well, that's a fantastic message um, to end with for everybody there. You see, there's opportunity and it's not a cliche. There's real opportunity out there. <laughs> um, listen, all of Jacqueline's uh, information will be available in our contributor bio about our organization. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your organization. Spark Engagement Index, <clears throat> excuse me, Spark Engagement Index is the website.com. Mm -hmm. And you can find me on LinkedIn. And we specialize in uh, reaching out and profiling individuals and organizations, not just collective groups on their mm -hmm. engagement states. And we give everyone from the bottom to the top advice on how they can support their own passion at work. That's fantastic and, and really timely. So I would uh, I would encourage everybody to go check out uh, check out uh, Jacqueline and her organization. I think this is a great time to work on engagement because that momentum is going to carry you through, believe you me, as things start to unfold over the next while. So again, my name is John Golden, Says Pop Online, Says Magazine, Pipeliners, CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.